plain designs in by blood alone be aware a lot of this is speculation as you guys are aware the meta does not get established until the community has played lots of games found out the best tactics and developed the best strategies so i am going to tickle your brain cells today and see if we can find out and experiment what the future meta could possibly be and i have some really cool theories and i thought i'd just uh, share them with you today Alrighty then first of all i think people are going to design a cheap fighter so the strategy in hoy was to just try and make the most advanced fighter so you go for the fighter 2 early as possible as germany and then moving on to the fighter 3 as quickly as possible i think an alternative strategy would be in this case would be just like to light airframe find yourself putting on the cheapest possible engine now be aware the reduced speed on this engine will affect its combat performance but we're all about making something in mass numbers just for the sole purpose of getting air superiority because remember one plane equals one air superiority apart from a strategic bomber which is 0.01 and a heavy fire which is a medium air from fighter which is 0.25 but we'll not worry about it for the time being we're just going to produce cheapest chips fighter ones at the same time we put on the cheapest possible machine guns so times two light machine guns why because they are the cheapest and they offer air attack so they make it a fighter plane and that's basically it it doesn't seem like a great deal or that's actually a big thing but overall the cost of this plane is super cheap at 90 production cost but overall you can produce a mass number of these so this will do two things this will gain you air superiority sure a lot of these will get shot down however you will gain an edge to be able to get the stats for your attack reduce enemy defense also mass producing these for interception would be useful but be aware that adding more air attack would be useful because four air attack will not be able to do enough damage to shoot down one of its own it needs at least attack three times to shoot down one of these small airframes so in all fairness it's probably better to probably go for something that offers more decent amount of damage so in this case, maybe a cannon, because a cannon could do enough damage to kill one of its own in that case. However, I'm not really sure how agility is calculated. It might be able to negate some of that damage. Regardless, we're going to go with a cheap design here. And overall, you can mass produce these. One other thing you could do too with this is gain full air superiority of a sea region, and this will allow you to do a full-blown naval invasion. It's an idea behind me just to see if you can mass produce as many of these in large numbers to see of what kind of impact you can actually have. Definitely useful for interception and also definitely useless for anti-bombing duties, which is Germany, you get bombed a lot the next strategy is a medium airframe and it is what i coin the air tank and the simple process of this is you can make this a fighter if you want which will make it a heavy fire or you can give bombs to it so in this case if we had a medium bomb bay this will now be a tactical bomber at the same time uh, we need to put lots of armor on this the idea behind this is you're making a flying tank as you can see in 1939 they don't really care about plane survivability so they don't even have the research for it we'll work on that now and then you see under special modules you can put armor plating on there's three levels of armor plating there's one for lights one for mediums and one's for heavies depending on what airframe you select they go up in cost, but they also offer more air protection and air defenses. So the simple case behind this is you just fill this plane full of armor plating, which adds loads and loads of air defense. Be aware the more advanced airframes have more slots, therefore you can put in more armor. And also be aware self-sealing fuel tanks also gives lots of air defense as well. You don't even lose agility with that. Be aware that you need a really decent engine on this plane because overall you need enough thrust for it to take off. So it's going to have to be a it's going to be a three engine design. Yeah. In that case, it will be. But at the same time, you probably want to give this some air attack as well. In this case, maybe heavy machine guns. In this case, we've only got light, so you can just fill that with some machine guns, which will give it the ability to do air interception, and it will also give it the ability to do air superiority. And it can also defend itself when it's doing its bombing runs as well. The idea behind this plane is this plane has so much defense, very few planes will actually be able to do enough damage to it to actually shoot it down. So we will be get blistered full of bullets and it'll be able to complete its bombing run and return back to base and when it returns back to base it'll gain all its air defense back again so it kind of works like hp so it sets off with 44 hp it does its bombing run it gets hit four times each for like 10 damage so it only got four hp back it returns back to base it gains 44 hp and it goes on its next bombing run so the idea behind it is this plane is practically indestructible unless you stack enough air attack onto your fires which might actually start to become the meta if players are stacking lots of armor armor onto their planes but anyway this is the air tank at the same time if you want a medium airframe you can actually put machine guns on it at the very front and now you've got a heavy fighter so this is the same kind of design really you've gone for a super heavy fighter plane and uh what you could do with this is remove the armor i mean you could have some armor on it as well but you can then focus very heavily 
on cannons as well. You can get higher level cannons as well later in the game. But overall, this is the classic design of a fighter prior to buy blood alone. It's a plane that is meant to shoot down enemy bombers. And you can see here now, you've not got as much air attack. You've not got as much agility. You're not doing dogfights with this, but the air attack is massive. So when it sees a bomber that has eye armor, you could throw all of its cannons at it and completely strip its armor away and knock the plane out of the sky. It is built for the role of interception. And it's going to be interesting because interception has changed now. Just a really brief overlay of how interception works. So let's say there's these planes, all these boyos, a base, let's say here, and they're going to do a bombing run, a close air support or strategic bombing of this region here. They have to pass through this air zone, 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 and this air zone. So if you, for instance, wanted to deny any bombing from mainland Germany to the UK, you could intercept any of these regions. So you put the planes here and you would say, put them on interception. As they fly through these regions, they will get intercepted and you'll be able to attack them and shoot them down. And it is represented by a number in brackets. I can't give an example to show you, but you see this number here. These are the ones actively participating in the mission in question. In this case, fighters intercepting. Now there'll be another number to the left of it in brackets. And this would refer to planes that are actively on a mission, but they're actually passing through this region and they're not participating in that mission in that region. And that will let you know to intercept here to therefore to potentially shoot down others. So there's going to be some really key areas of the map that you can intercept and shoot down a lot of planes. For instance, me as Germany taking out France, if you were to intercept all the English Channel, this would deny a lot of activity for the bombers, for the Allies, unless they were to bomb higher up here and only cross through the North Sea and the Eastern North Sea before reaching Germany, for instance, using strap bombers. Nice to know. So this is a strategy I tested out and it did not work. However, I might have just been doing it wrong. So it is a matter of an another medium airframe. However, we're basically making a plane, the multi-role. And the idea with this plane is it basically is a plane that can do everything. So we'll put a bomb bay on it. So that now it's a tactical bomber. Then we'll have, let's say, cannons on it. So it's got air attacks. So it can air superiority and interception. Now we're also going to add torpedo mounts onto it as well. So now it can do naval strikes and port strikes. We're going to put a camera on it too, a recon equipment, a camera, and now it can do air recon. Apparently the torpedo is what allows it to do naval patrol, which is a new mission, which is basically the same thing as air recon, but it's overseas to basically spot aircraft. I was surprised that recon cam wouldn't get in some surface detection as well. Of course, because this plane has got so much weight on it, it needs a big engine to lift it off the ground. So you have to do a triple engine or a quad engine on this to be able to make it take off. The biggest concern of this plane is you're gonna need to put a lot of armor on it to make it worth its while. All these bit mountings on this plane are gonna make it horrendously expensive and when it gets shot down you're not only losing one but you're losing kind of a lot of planes based on its overall cost and uh, I totally found that it was convenient to have a multi-role but overall it's basically the jack of all trades but the master of nothing it is like a tactical bomber in the old hearts of iron 4 prior to Bible it alone kind of does everything but it never really does anything exceptional like strap bombers are better at strap bombing close air support is better for cast air attack and air defense is kind of better for fighters so like where does it fit in I don't know but overall the flexibility of this plan is really cool and if you have air dominance and late game and you've got more military factories than sense, maybe the way forward is just to mass produce these so you can just do lots of stuff. But overall, this is a really cool concept. Okay, we're going to look at a large airframe now. We've got an interwar large airframe. And you can see there's so many slots for this big boy. Look at them all. There's only one slot that's not unlocked here. So you've got a potential to put a lot on this plane. However, look at the cost for just the chassis. 32 production costs. So without doing anything to this, it's got a lot of cost. But here we go, guys. So now you've got the option for a large plane, which would usually just be a strap bomber. You can have bombs onto it. So it will become a strap bomber. Yay, we're already familiar with those. We can also put torpedo mountings on it as well, which we now have a interwar maritime patrol aircraft. This is a brand new aircraft added to buy blood alone. And you're probably thinking, where will this fit in the game though? What would the function of this be? The idea behind this is you've got now a long range spotting naval aircraft, and you can also do naval striking over incredibly long distances. So what does this do? So for instance, if you are getting convoy raided, for instance, is the UK, or for instance, as Japan or the United States in the Pacific, uh, you now have an option now for a super long range, 2000 kilometers range plane. You can bomb in these long range sea regions. So then man, you can go for range improvements here 
here, which has the ability to add on, here we go, extra field tanks, which gives extra 600 kilometers per range, but you do lose air defense. So overall, if you wanted to, I don't know why you would ever do this, but you could add the option to add on loads of extra field tanks. And you could make it a flying boat too, which gives extra surface detection, which kind of makes sense anyway, if you think about it. If it's, if it's a maritime plane, a long range maritime plane, you now have the range now of 4,400 kilometers. <laughs> <laughs> that's just ridiculous. So that's basically the full girth of the Atlantic Ocean, pretty much. That's some pretty insane spotting power. I think air defense only actually matters when being shot by another plane. I don't think it gets affected by ground-based AA, like support AA or AA on ships or static AA buildings. So this wouldn't even matter. So maybe this would be the perfect combination. I don't know. And once again, this plane is just simply spotting, so it doesn't have any penalty to its stats overall. But if you wanted to, you could do a super long-range port strike <laughs> Super long range recon. That's insane. So this also applies to medium airframes too. So you can now also have an interwar scout plane airframe. So it's basically a medium airframe scout. <laughs> when would you ever do this? I don't know. But I suppose it'd be a multi-role aircraft, wouldn't it? You can only have one camera. But I suppose at the same time, maybe you could add machine guns. Because at the end of the day, the camera doesn't actually add much cost. It's only one production cost and one weight. So overall, I suppose you can add this on practically for free, I guess. And maybe just have a fighter as the ability to spot as well. And I suppose if you had a torpedo bomb and you can have a naval patrol on as well. But overall, the cost for a torpedo mountings is super expensive. So a medium scout... <laughs> I guess, I guess it's kind of good in a way. Now we have the ability to make a scout that's super long range. So maybe this is viable? So you don't need to put a big engine on it. You have the ability to scout, but also you've got an awesome range of 1,200. So this is basically like a spy on steroids. <laughs> but you can add extra fuel tanks on it as well if you wanted to. If you wanted to. And now you've got a spy plane that's a range of 2,800 kilometers. <laughs> you can spy on the Americans from Portugal. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! Scout planes, even though I've only used them in moderation, I found that kind of okay. You gain a good intel advantage, which gives that little boost in combat. However, I find that when they're in battles, they get shot down frequently, which defeats the purpose. So at the end of the day, you kind of want them to fight a little bit and defend their own, I guess. It just feels a little bit strange that uh, they get shot down so frequently in combat. But overall, it's definitely a viable option now. If you're wondering about transport planes, unfortunately, transport planes have not changed. They are exactly the same their way before. Um, the PDX team did talk about maybe adding the ability to build transport planes, but unfortunately it created weird scenarios where you could make paratroopers drop over really long distances, which I'll admit is fun and super meme -y, but unfortunately confused the AI too much and it would lead to situations where you could, I don't know, capitulate the Soviet Union <laughs> from France. <laughs> That's just so, so stupid. I just made that up, by the way. Probably not the Soviet Union. They're the nation that probably would put up the most fight. But overall, maybe you could capitulate France from, I don't know, bloody Norway, maybe, for instance. That would be pretty insane. Hence the reason why they chose to include that. Uh, because one, it's gamey. And two, the AI can't really defend against those really weird scenarios of long-range transports, which is just weird. One other suggestion, which I think might become meta, is just having fighters, like you normally would with the machine guns. And for the second slot, you might choose to include more firepower for air attack or more cannons, which will seem viable, for instance, for fighting against more heavily armored aircraft. However, the second slot might actually be worthwhile just to be bomb locks. Now, the cost of this is only one production cost. It's pretty low still, and it only adds an additional four weight. Not massive, but meaningful impact. So what you can do with this is whenever you have full air Air superiority and you don't really need to worry about enemy aircraft you can just do close air support that's right guys a fighter that could do close air support that could do bombing runs so basically the fighter bomber i know you saw that from hearts of iron 2 and hearts of iron 3 the fighter bomber is back and here it is uh, only thing to be aware of though is one obviously there's a bit of weight in factored in so therefore you have to have a bigger engine attached to this plane and two when it is doing close air support runs it will take an agility penalty think about it it's carrying a heavy bomb so therefore it doesn't have as good turning circle in the air so therefore it can't do all of its funky maneuvers to avoid enemy fire but think about it the potential for this is huge and it's only a very small production cost if you think about it for a more advanced fighter which unlocks more of these modules it will become more upon more upon more viable. So in this case, we'll unlock the next fighter plane. So now we've improved small airframe. And then you can add on, let's say, your machine guns, which doesn't affect agility. Uh, you can go for your cannons, which will affect agility, but gives you lots of air attack. Once again, gives you more anti-bomber potential. And then top it off at the very end, just throw on bomb locks. And if you're not over your weight, you can maybe slap on a bigger engine. 
There you go. Oh, just the right amount. However, you can't do a close air support mission because it increases the weight by plus four, so therefore you can't do it. In that case, you'd have to go for a dual engine fighter, which is a bit janky, unfortunately. You'd think if it had more engines on it, it would lose the agility, you'd think, wouldn't you? But be aware, the more things you attach onto your plane, the more speed you lose. So 520 kilometers per hour. If we set up, add on a turret on, we'll attach it to 500. Another turret down to 460. Remember, losing that speed loses its combat effectiveness. Remember, agility and your max speed, your ability to dogfight, and then you obviously need air attack and air defense to hold your own and take down enemy bombers. So it's just something to take into account. Reason why, but I think the more naked fighters are probably going to become more meta for their high speed and high agility. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you want more by Blood Alone content, hey, why aren't you subscribing? Yeah, you, why? Huh? Why? More content you want? Oh, right here. This is the content you want. Click, click.